Hello world, welcome back to the Razer RC. It's time for the full review of the Schumacher Cat L1R. This is the brand new one ton scale electric four wheel drive race vehicle from Schumacher Racing. It's been out for, I don't know, a couple months now. I've been driving it, fixing it, braking it, tuning it, even tried to race this. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't have enough uh, vehicles out there for a four wheel drive uh, race class. So I didn't actually get to race. I also broke it during practice, so it wouldn't have worked out anyways. But um, yeah, I've been driving this quite a bit and wanted to share my full thoughts. So this is the full review. We're gonna be giving it a rating in five different categories are rating from one to five stars three stars would be average as compared to the other one ton scale four-wheel drive electric race vehicles out there i'm lucky enough to have owned an x before a 22x4 i have a b74.2 i had the previous version of this as well the cat l1 evo so very familiar with all four-wheel drive buggies out there on the market have lots of comparison reviews and stuff so you can go check those out if you're a little more curious on that uh, best place to pick up the schumacher stuff is definitely discountrcstore.com they have the widest selection they have the most parts everything that you need they will carry if they don't have in stock they ship them over from england like pretty much every week fast shipping throughout the u.s so i will have a link in the description below unfortunately you know schumacher online uh, some stores have closed so i definitely recommend picking stuff up from discount rc store because it's hard to get some stuff uh, online on the plus side they have been you know sort of focusing more on the american market they do have a lot of team drivers ryan cavalier being obviously the most famous of them but they have brock champlain a lot of local sponsored drivers as well uh, my local track i actually picked up several of the top drivers in the area are right now running schumachers are pretty cool to see schumacher kind of having a building and uh, building a bigger presence within the u.s so uh, let's get it off uh, with the first category I do have a video on the build already, so uh, build-wise, yeah, this vehicle is a little bit more complicated than your standard vehicle. It is belt drive, if you haven't figured it out by now. It does have two belts, a short one in the front, long one in the rear. That's kind of the Schumacher traditional uh, layout, uh, very stiff uh, chassis braces up top. They did modify quite a few things uh, with this vehicle. Did change out the arms, the uh, knuckles, the steering blocks, all that kind of stuff. They actually changed out the rear hubs as well to kind of have a adjustable style. Uh, uh, did trend can you know change the tra uh, chassis quite a bit as well so this vehicle although it's a refinement of the previous generation product uh, has a lot of new parts of uh, change the way it drives the chassis is quite a bit different much more of a, a oval shape rather than the square shape that they had before but yeah, the uh, build went pretty well. Um, I have a full video on that, so I'm not gonna get into too much here, but it is a little bit more complicated. You do have to drill out holes in the uh, shock cap. You do have to glue up like the diff cases and stuff like that, so a little bit weird stuff. Um, I don't think it's really the best choice for a beginner, but if you're experienced with RC cars, you know, obviously you're not gonna have too much of a trouble, but well, let's get into the design. Obviously the last of the belt drives, pretty much every other where four wheel drive race buggy has gone to shaft drive, so uh, I'm a big fan of uh, belt drive vehicles i think there are some advantages i do think there are some disadvantages but i'm a fan of the way they drive i think they're interesting vehicles i do like the smooth power delivery so that's pretty cool um there are lots of adjustments pretty much everything you would expect on a modern race vehicle sway bars adjustable uh, positions for the shocks obviously different camber locations uh, you can get different steering blocks you do have uh you know you can move the camber link in or out um down the center it has some interesting aspects it does have a slipper clutch as you might expect no center differential but it also has what's called a front adjustable brake so you can actually adjust the bios under braking you know between the front and back it allows more a little bit more uh, smooth uh, actual braking obviously belts are adjustable with tension which actually does adjust the flex a little bit um, different battery mounting locations uh, does have an interesting pinion so you do have to use these long boss pinions is what Schumacher calls it they do come in aluminum and steel so they do have lightweight ones or more durable ones since I'm running a more of a 13.5 setup I am running the aluminum but that is one kind of interesting aspect um, and then obviously tunable disc two or four gear it comes with four uh, I'm sorry two gears out of the box but you do have options for those four gear uh, aluminum bottom uh, differential has front and rear adjustable you know sweep uh, tow in kick up uh, everything that you would expect track with all that kind of stuff that you would expect on the front and rear so yeah a lot of adjustments a lot of modifications you can make to change the way it drives so uh, uh design wise i actually think this is one of the better ones i'm gonna give it full four stars really the only downside i would say is there's no center differential option not as big of a deal on carpet where oftentimes you're probably going to be running slipper but on 
dirt or clay or you know loose traction surfaces it is something that's a bit of a limitation the other thing is obviously with belt drive not quite as good in the super dusty dirty uh, conditions because the belts are not enclosed or anything you could get dirt within the belts so that is a little bit of a downside but yeah design wise i do like the way it has been built um i think it's it's interesting it's different I don't consider that a bad thing. Some people might not like belt drive, but for me, I don't think that's a bad thing. So design-wise, I'm gonna give it four stars out of five. Now the Cat L1R does have a little bit of a different uh, driving characteristics than the previous one, the L1 Evo. I did have a comparison shootout between the L1 Evo and all the other modern X, uh, four wheel drive buggies that you could buy out there. And this one, I think is a huge step up from the Cat L1 Evo. Cat L1 Evo, I felt the stiffness of the chassis, the flex was a little bit way too stiff. It, it, it also had a little bit less corner speed in my opinion. They upped the uh, performance of this quite a bit. I think it is a huge improvement in the way it actually drives. Corner speed I think is up, steering I think is quite a bit up. Um, jumping and landing is slightly improved. I mean, it's slightly more forgiving on landing because you do have a little bit more flex, uh, you know, sort of laterally, I guess you would call it. But there is quite a bit of stiffness uh, front to back. So longitudinally, it is still an extremely stiff vehicle. You do need to make sure you land this pretty cleanly on the four uh, wheels. If you kind of nose plan it like this, it has no give whatsoever with the fairly steep uh, steering arms, the very stiff upper uh, braces here. I'm running the full uh, Mikhail Orlowski carpet setup, except for the S2 front stiffeners. I probably should try that as well. But yeah, it does have a lot of stiffness front to back, so you do need to land it a little bit better. But on the ground, I think, you know, belt drive vehicles actually have been advantage. I think the power delivery is a little more smooth. I think the front adjustable brake does make it extremely smooth on braking as well. On sort of carpet, AstroTurf type surfaces, there's a reason why Schumacher is extremely popular. And I think it does drive quite a bit better uh, on those artificial surfaces. Not so much maybe on dirt. I'm not as familiar with dirt and clay. My local track is carpet, so I haven't got a chance to run on that. But yeah, in those high traction surfaces, this is an excellent vehicle. Smooth power delivery on the ground. Uh, corners really well. Tons of steering. Uh, very neutral, I would say. Uh, you know, front to back, left to right. Uh, it's much more balanced than the previous generation vehicle. The previous one felt like you just sort of had a super stiff block of loom and then like wheels and tires attached to that and you're kind of driving it that way. But this one is a much more fluid car, much more organic, uh, much more dynamic, I would say. I don't know if those are very good adjectives, but that's kind of what comes to me, how it performs on the ground. The only real weakness I think is jumping and landing. Still a little bit of a weakness because, you know, it is so stiff front to back. It's not quite as forgiving. You do have to be able to land this thing quite well. But performance wise, I think this is pretty good. I'm gonna get four stars out of five. Jumping lane is really the only area I feel like it has a little bit of weakness. Sort of in stock spec vehicles also as well. You know, I do find belt drive to have a little bit more drag, um, but there are changes you can make. Um, you can get thinner belts. I think you can get like a lightweight, uh, like lockout uh, parts instead of a slipper. There are things out there to make it more of a stock spec vehicle, and that might be the only area I feel it uh, might lack a little bit. Every four-wheel drive vehicle I've ever owned has broken parts. Usually it's going to be the front arms, and I did break a couple front arms on this. Also broke a, a shock cap. So the shock caps are traditionally a two-piece part. They do have a plastic inner and then like an aluminum ring. I actually switched over to all aluminum parts um, because I did break one of those. So that was a little bit weird. Uh, didn't break any other parts, you know. Shoe markers in general I think are reasonably durable. I am running the aluminum uh front hubs here so that might add a little more durability but overall durability wise i'm going to give an average score three stars i've never broken a shock cap on any other four-wheel drive vehicles i do think that's a little weird i'm not a big fan of the shock setup on these things in general they got the taper springs they kind of got these uh, shock cups that don't hold on quite as well and then they got the two-piece shock cast which i'm not a big fan of but you know it does work um that might be the only area area i thought was a little strange that i broke but uh, durability wise i would give an average score three stars out of five it doesn't mean it's bad it's just kind of typical for what you might find in the four-wheel drive uh, class you know i think some other vehicles i've broken parts on everything i've broken you know shock rod ends or shocks uh shock shafts on my 22 x Explorer, broken arms on my b74 broken arms on my x-ray so i don't think any vehicle out there is um indestructible but this one you know does have some air areas i think could break a little more easily than some of the other brands 
Schumacher is obviously a smaller brand here in the US if you're in England if you're in other parts of the world obviously you're gonna have much more access to Schumacher parts than you would uh, in say in Asia or something like that but uh, parts wise you can definitely get everything online so that's a cool thing I do also see more and more hobby shops carrying Schumacher parts as carpet becomes more popular here in the US it is a little bit easier to get parts so that's a cool thing so they are growing but still on the support and maintenance side they are a little bit uh, harder to get stuff than the other major brands like Team Associate or even X-Ray or TLR so I'm going to give it a lower below average score in the support and maintenance category two stars out of five maintenance wise this vehicle's not bad you know you can definitely get access to the disc by popping up four screws and you know rate you know the, sh the diff cases are split in half and stuff like that but obviously you are going to have to pay attention to more things definitely there are a lot of things you need to make sure are locked tight properly you need to make sure your belt tension is set correctly and to make sure you know belt tensioners are locked down so they don't move you have the slipper you got to be able to set correctly the front adjustable brake you got to be able to set correctly so yeah mains wise there are more things you need to be aware of with a belt drive vehicle so this is definitely a little bit more complicated than your typical shaft drive vehicle that's again why i give it below average score in the sport and mains category The Cat L1R sells for $529.99 here in the U.S. at the time of this vehicle. That's actually a pretty good price. Most of the other brands are quite a bit more. Uh, the TLR is $579.99 for the 22X4 Elite. Now, obviously, it is the Elite version. It does have a little bit more aluminum parts, a little bit higher spec parts. Uh, the Team Associate Busan 4.2 is the same price at $529.99. And the X-Ray is quite a bit more at $609.99. So those are going to be the four major brands here in the U.S. There are other brands like Yokomo, like Kyosho, but you know, they really haven't made as many changes here and they're not quite as popular here in the US. Um, so yeah, within that range of prices, this is actually one of the better values at $529.99. So I'm gonna give it four stars in the value category. I do think there are some areas where, you know, they kind of cheap out a little bit. You know, it does have the plastic uh, steering hubs normally out of the box. Uh, does not have X-rings for the shocks. You know, most of them have gone to X-rings, whereas this is O-rings. You do have to glue up the discs, the plastic diffs. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. But you know, how it's equipped, it does come with pretty much, you know, most of what you will need for uh, maybe an AstroTurf or dirt style sit up once you go to carpet there are things you probably want to buy different sway bars maybe different uh, steering knuckles and stuff like that so yeah there are maybe some adjustments you want to make but out of the box you know pretty good value above average for store for sure four stars So final thoughts on the Cat L1R is that this is finally a competitive buggy. I did feel like the Cat L1 Evo was a little bit down in performance wise compared to you know sort of the other modern lightweight vehicles that are out there. They've all sort of been copying each other and I do like that Schumacher has stuck with their traditional belt drive system, kind of gone with their tried and proven uh, platform and just made it better and better and better. And this is a huge improvement in my opinion in terms of performance, quite a bit better than the previous one. Um, but it does have some weaknesses. Obviously, they're really maybe average. I think jumping landing may be a little below average compared to the other vehicles. But on the ground, I think it's above average. So overall, yeah, if you're a you know, Bell Drive fan, this is definitely the one to get. It's pretty much the only one out there. If you want to be different, the Schumacher is obviously always going to be a good choice, especially for carpet and Oster turf. I think this is a pretty competitive vehicle. Uh, there are a lot of setup sheets as well. as There's going to be team drivers. Even within the U.S., you'll be able to find stuff. So that's pretty cool and an improvement that they've made uh, in the last year or so uh, with their uh, team network. So yeah, Schumacher wise, I think it's a great vehicle. Is it the best one out there? I don't know. They all have kind of their pros and cons. Um, obviously, some of the other brands are going to be easier to own and uh, maintain just from a support main uh, side because you're more easily able to get parts. But Schumark, I have not really had issues finding parts. X-Ray, I do find that some parts go out of stock and you know some things you might not be able to find, so that can be somewhat difficult. But this is, you know, in some ways kind of better than the X-Ray, in my opinion. So anyways, those are my thoughts on the Cat L1R. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe buttons. Look for more videos. Thanks for watching.